Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Confidently in Charge. I am Allison KT, your hostess, and today I am so excited to be talking to the phenomenal Amy Powell. Um, Amy is a life coach who specializes in supporting individuals in cultivating happiness. Um, I had the joy of actually meeting Amy in person briefly this summer while she passed through Denver, Colorado. We were like masked and everything, but we actually got to meet in person. And um, while we were talking just about happiness, you know, I just, I loved her story of, you know, her own transition into entrepreneurship and what she works with clients around. Um, she basically, you know, saw all of those quick fixes and the band-aids that are out there, um, you know, the retail therapy of getting over a bad day or, you know, needing this perfect product to make things all better. Um, and she really, you know, saw through all of that and kind of felt a calling to, find the key to happiness, you know, like within. Um, and so I've just, I've loved following her journey and through that kind of being more conscious about my own choices and my own kind of relationships with technology and all sorts of very cool things. Um, so I'm just so excited, Amy, to welcome you to the show today. Thank you. It is an honor to be here and I just love your energy. I love our conversation. So yes, to I hear that. And for those of you who are getting the podcast version of this, you know, check out the YouTube because Amy and I both have on like very bright poppy outfits. <laughs> if you're catching up on YouTube, you're catching the great uh, images that we have going on. But I just, I love that so much. So let's really just dive on in. Did you always know that you wanted this kind of entrepreneurial life? I, I knew, so I, you know, I, after college, I had started working for people and uh, working for teams of people and companies and moving around a bit. And in that, you know, for about probably 12 years of my early career, I always knew that I wanted to create something unique. Mm. And I knew also that I wanted to gather people together mm -hmm. to create and to manifest this mm -hmm. idea that I was going to, to create. And I also knew that I wanted to work for myself. Mm -hmm. So really all of those goals, the avenue was starting my business, starting my own business. And that's really how I was gonna be able to, to achieve these things that I wanted. Um, it's so interesting though, this, this idea of entrepreneurship and, you know, we both have lived in the Bay area and I really feel like that word has this like fun and whimsical, mm -hmm. I fantasy kind of like right notion to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I picked that up. I, I, I believed that and it was, oh, okay. As soon as I start my business, I'm going to you know, create this thing and it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to like have this life that I've seen or heard about kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've really realized is getting back to, and even just saying the three goals to you right now of wanting to create something unique and different, wanting to work with people that I liked, right. Mm -hmm. And I loved and, you know, mm -hmm. bringing people together around this idea and working for myself I, I have to continuously remind myself that's why I'm doing this because it's so easy to focus on that end goal of success, right? right? Or, oh, cool, I did this thing and you know I, I have press and I have all this stuff around me, mm -hmm. but realizing that the struggle, the work that it takes to get to that end goal, that really should be the fun part. And that would, that's what you're signing up for. And I've had to really train and relearn that. So just going back to that word, that idea of entrepreneurship, I, I, I always knew that I did, yes, want to do something, but I wasn't, I didn't sign up for the work. And now I've really retrained myself of, it's not the end goal. It's not you, now that you have this successful business, it is really this work around yeah. challenging yourself, right? And just, sure. and and doing something different and that's, that's for you. Yeah. It's not really for anyone else really at the end right. of the day. 
right. even though, you know, we are both in service for others mm -hmm. as part of our business, but um, it's, yeah, it's just been incredible. So yeah, so long answer, but yes, <laughs> I, I always did know. And mm -hmm. I've just, as we'll get more into, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I've learned so much. Yeah. So first of all, rest assured, that is always the longest answer. I feel like I feel like people <laughs> always tell me their beautiful long story. And then they're like, it was such a long answer. I'm like, it's beautiful. It's, you know, everything that's brought you here. But I, I just want to acknowledge too, for everyone listening, you know, new entrepreneurs. Yeah, I, I was with you. Like I thought, you know, I'll write a little business plan. I'll put up a website, like things will just fall into place. But what I discovered in my journey was like the self-sabotage that starts creeping in. And like suddenly, you know, I didn't realize all of the like personal healing work that needs to mm -hmm. happen in the background of, you know, starting a business and being your own boss. So like, yeah, it's real. Oh it's <laughs> it's real. real. There's so much. I thought I was just going to learn how to write cute emails. Like I didn't realize <laughs> I was going to have to do money mindset and like overcome all of this but it's so true that like you know just acknowledging that entrepreneurship you know it's there it's something you want but there is kind of the connotations to it and just figuring out like what does entrepreneurship look like in my case so you know let's talk about your business and starting your business how has that been for you you know is it have you always known exactly what it is? Is it shifting? Um, tell us a little bit about how that's been. I'll echo what you just said. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the person, so yes, personal development is, has been such a huge part of this, which I didn't realize before. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll even go a step further to say it's been a personal development fast track. Mm -hmm. because if you don't know yourself and if you're not willing to be so vulnerable and trust, trust yourself, but also put yourself out there mm -hmm. is you learn that very quickly. And the, the biggest thing really, I think that um, has come up for me, uh, you know, how it's been is I've realized that perfection I I've hidden behind perfection and that also perfection is a form of fear and running a business or trying to rally people around an idea that maybe you and you and I have talked about this too of educating people around an idea that doesn't necessarily exist mm, or that yeah. someone hasn't done yet right yeah. and so you know that that sense of perfection being a form of fear of really, I, I've acknowledged and I've realized that, and I, I realized that I've been hiding behind perfection for a long time. And you just have to continue to trust yourself and put yourself out there and like get over these types of fears. Because if you, you want to perfect things or you want to make sure it's the right thing or you want to have it all figured out before you put something out, nothing's going to get out. Mm -hmm. So true. And right. So you have to start from somewhere and you just have to be so vulnerable and put yourself mm -hmm. out. So it's been an incredible personal learning experience for me. And one of the biggest challenges I've ever created for myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm so thankful for mm -hmm. this opportunity and, and all the amazing people around me for, mm -hmm. for, um, going at it with me because yeah. we're, we can't do Doing this it alone. together. We're making it yes. happen together <laughs> yes. in those dreams. Yeah. You know, so it sounds like there's really been a lot that you've learned and witnessed and discovered about yourself. You know, what do you think is kind of like the biggest thing that you've learned? Um, is it that perfection piece or, um, you know, is there additional that you've learned? There, so I'm just, I'm just marinating on this for a second because, mm -hmm. you know, as we all move through life and one thing that, you know, now what I'm, I'm helping clients with and helping people realize is how to live a more content, more happy, more fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I, I feel so compelled to do this work is because I 
have been on the other side. And even though I can say that, yes, I'm absolutely happier and more fulfilled today than I have been ever in my life, mm -hmm. I am still working so hard at, you know, as we adjust and move through life, different challenges come up, different things come up, and you always have to continue checking in with yourself. So I think, you know, really the biggest thing is learning to honor yourself. And that's something that I wasn't doing, you know, and, and I said earlier about, you know, the perfection and fear and really trusting yourself. To be honest, I wasn't necessarily connected with myself. I didn't really mm -hmm. trust myself. I didn't know myself. Mm -hmm. And all yeah. of those components really bubbled up to not honoring me and who mm -hmm. I am and what I want. And that's been the biggest thing that I've really, in, in the last eight months, absolutely has been this time of incredible, intense reflection mm -hmm. and a grounding of sense of who, who am I? What do I want? And realizing, like, you know, you said in your intro that there's, we're, we as a human society are conditioned to want other things outside of ourselves, mm -hmm. what our neighbor has or what someone we have seen walking down the street has or what someone in an ad has. We want all these things. Mm -hmm. Have we ever really allowed ourselves to check in with ourselves and say, mm -hmm. is that really what I want? Is that really going to serve me? Is that really expressing myself in the most, and I'll use the word authentic, mm -hmm. um, you know, authentic and, and natural way, like, you know, even everything from fashion to goals in life to you know our careers all these things mm -hmm. taking the time to really check in and, and is that really what I want yeah. and is that really honoring me and so that's been the biggest thing mm -hmm. that I've learned yeah and continue and working on today but that's really what I I mm -hmm. work with clients on is mm -hmm. um let's get grounded let's like yeah. you know let's let's check in what do you want yeah. what do you feel right that's so true I think I hear so often with clients, you know, we'll start with like, what are your goals? What do you want? And, you know, sometimes I find that people don't have like the quick answer because they don't necessarily know like, okay, what do I want? Generally, you know, after a little bit, we start to figure it out and, you know, figure, put words into, into what we want. But, you know, I really hear in your story, you know, finding that intuitive connection to yourself almost of just figuring out like, okay, this is what I want. This is, you know, this isn't, I'm not chasing the quick fad that'll make me feel better. I'm truly checking in for like this sustainable kind of nourishment that I need here. So that's really, really powerful. Um, and that's an amazing, like sustainable is such an amazing word because, mm -hmm. you know, right now it's so trendy in the environmental sustainability space, right? Mm -hmm. But when you think about sustainability of like sustaining us as humans, mm -hmm. you know, that's really connected to overall happiness and fulfillment, right? Yeah. And so what is going to sustain us as an individual? And then, uh, so great word. Yes. Yeah. And that actually perfectly sets up kind of my next question, um, which is really around sort of maintaining confidence like you hit on beautifully at the beginning of this how entrepreneurship all of a sudden like hits you with all this personal development work and everything um and you know there are challenges that pop up so in terms of you know taking like a sustainable approach to being an entrepreneur and knowing these challenges may arise how do you maintain that confidence how do you push through those challenges I have read a lot of books, and so I'm going to talk about one specifically, mm -hmm. uh, Tara Moore, Playing Big. If mm -hmm. y'all haven't read it, it's, it's really, really good. And it um, talks about women just being conditioned to play small in society. Mm -hmm. And she really sets you up with good context and tools to start playing big. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, playing big in your personal life, playing big in your community, playing big in your business. So it really hits across the board of just empowering women. And awesome. she's an amazing inspiration for me. So mm -hmm. one thing she really, really talks about that which hit me very hard and clearly is our inner critic and our inner wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I've done in, in the last year has really been 
hard work on defining mm. what my inner critic sounds like, mm. what it, what it looks like, what it is, like these, these ideas and thoughts that we have, where does it come from in your body? Mm-hmm. What is that inner critic really defining that? And then defining your inner wisdom, your intuition and same thing, right? What does it sound like? Where is it coming from in your body when you hear that happen? Like, what does it look like? What it, like, how is it speaking to you? Is it calm and um, collected or is it rushed and, and frantic? And so being able to define, I can now very clearly understand who's talking to me when. So even before this interview, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm getting ready. I'm, you know, a few deep breaths of, you know, right. We're, you know, putting ourselves out there. We're being vulnerable mm-hmm. and very quickly my inner critic comes in and it's very rushed speaking, mm-hmm. frantic, deep, you know, coming from my head. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to, you know, get that sense of fear and you can't do this and you're not. Mm-hmm. And so I now know, okay, that's my inner critic talking. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Like we're going to, we're going to crush it. We are talking to Allison. She's mm-hmm. awesome. Hey. Right. And just really being able to let those feelings th- flow through you mm-hmm. and embracing them, acknowledging them and letting them pass. And then your inner wisdom of, you know, is this the right thing for me? Or, you know, what do I need to be doing today? Mm-hmm. And really honoring and listening to that voice and following that voice when it when it speaks to you. So wow, was- love that, love that so much. I yeah, I've always really resonated with kind of you know like anthropomorphizing different things and being like, okay, you know this feeling. What does this feeling feel like? But I love the empowerment of kind of a naming like, okay, that's my critic talking and they're saying words, you know, maybe they're trying to protect me or something, but just having that conversation with yourself of like, cool. Okay. Go lay down. I'm good. Like me and my inner wisdom are going to rock it. Um, I love that approach. And that's a beautiful way of, you know, maintaining that confidence and having that like aware relationship with yourself to, to check in and, and touch on. So, um, I want to transition a little bit to some of the work that you do with clients, um, because I know these are, these kinds of realizations are typically like kinds of some of the things that you help other people experience. Um, so could you tell us a little bit, you know, who are some of your favorite folks to work with? Um, Mm -hmm. and like, what do you typically work on with people? My favorite types of people to work with are people who are curious about what a happier life could be for them or what a more fulfilling life is. I think it's a really common thing for us to say, yeah, of course I'm happy or I'm going to get, I'm going, I have these goals in my life and I'm going to get the house or I'm going to get the job or, you know, I have to get through these next few months and then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And I used to say that myself. I used to do that. And so, you know, it's, it's really this idea around this curiosity of like, huh, well, can I enjoy my day to day? Can I like, you know, yes, I'm going to maybe be happier in a few months, but can I just enjoy my time now Mm -hmm. and really understanding what that could mean? And is that even possible for them? Um, And secondly, just really being committed to making some, some shifts in your life and willing to have some hard conversations. I think, you know, we talked about personal development and a lot of that work is super messy and it's super vulnerable and it's super uncomfortable, right? We just don't, it's easier for us not to deal with it. So the ty- these types of conversations are ones that we have, you know? And, and so how I really am working with clients is um, really deeply connecting with yourself, right? Understanding how you feel in certain situations or how you feel in, in, in actions that you're making or, um, you know, and, and maybe even goals that you've set. Really under, like, does that really fulfill me? Is that really what I want? So really getting more in touch and self-connected with your feelings, mm-hmm. really redefining and like setting 
maybe new goals or shifting the goals that you have. So they are really honoring you mm -hmm. and, and fulfilling you mm -hmm. and then using your mindset to hold yourself accountable and to do the work. Um, our minds are such amazing operating things <laughs> for lack of, um, you know, they have the power to completely crush us and they have the power to, to make us, you know, so expansive. Yeah. And um, so really being able to hone and utilize mm -hmm. our mind for, for good, right. And really pushing us out of this conditioned place that we've lived in for so long mm -hmm. and allowing us to, to, to be who we want to be and do what we want to do. Right. And so there's four places that we really dig into uh, physical space. So what's physically in our space, does it serve us? You know, mm -hmm. coming home, do you feel good coming home? Mm -hmm. uh, our mental mindset, you know, what are we, how are we perceiving situations that come to us? Are we taking control and, and ownership of mm -hmm. ourselves and our, our relationships and our lives? What are we doing with our time? Does, does what we do every day fulfill us, right? Um, and then also how are we spending our money? Mm. So, um, you know, are we spending money on, on things that we don't need? Are we getting into the retail therapy, right? Um, you know, and that's especially now during this time during the holidays, mm -hmm. I just cleaned out my closet um, for, I clean out my closet a lot, but just realize there's, we have so much stuff. So much stuff. Right. And so, the, so just to, to answer your question more briefly, um, those are the, the four main areas that we work through and we really get deep and granule on what is around us because once we have a bit more control and, and understanding in those areas, we are then able to free up space and, and have, you know, more um, either bring in things that do comfort us and do serve us and fulfill us mm -hmm. or just have that space so we can um, be more content in our yeah. lives. That's so powerful. And I imagine too, you know, one of the biggest benefits I could see to like working with you is having the space and the time to think about these things and having, you know, someone asking you these things because you know, I might say on the surface level, like, oh, you know, I just need to like, you know, figure it out and then everything will be happy. I just need to, you know, take some time to think about it, but I never take time to think about it. I need someone asking me like, okay, you know, how do you feel when you get it home? And it's like, suddenly, you know, doing the work is a much more, it's an active thing. Um, and so that sounds super powerful and I love kind of that holistic approach to looking at where your money is going you know what you're surrounding yourself with what you're doing I think that's super powerful in terms of like you say you know cultivating the life that you want and that happiness that's so powerful um I know something that's really important to you and something that I've loved learning about and you know have been a lot more mindful of since knowing you is my relationship with technology and mm. I know <laughs> yes. that is probably something that comes up with your clients as well. Um, could you, you know, tell us a little bit more in terms of tech habits, like why is it important to be mindful of our relationship with technology? So I'll, I'll start with a, a small story. So <laughs> in somewhat divine timing, I, about a year ago, I had a conversation with a friend and we were in Big Bear trying to take vacation. Mm -hmm. And I was on my phone the whole time, like literally the whole time I, I brought a book, but I had the book and I had my phone and I was, you know, just scrolling through things. And I remember her saying, you're, you're on your phone a lot. Mm. And, and in that time, it was just, well, yeah, you know, I'm on my phone. I got to, I have to stay in touch. I have to keep mm -hmm. up on information. Mm -hmm. And then right around the time uh, Social Dilemma came out, about three days before, I was talking to, the, you know, fast forward a few months and talking to another friend and they were telling me about how they had turned off all their notifications on their phone and had not been sleeping with their phone for the last few months. And it was like life-changing for them. 
And I said, well, I, I could never do that. That's crazy. You know, that sounds nice or whatever. You know, you don't, you don't have a business or you don't have you know, a life. No, I'm kidding. They have a very <laughs> great life. Um, but that was my reaction at the time. And on that phone call, they, somehow they got me to turn off all my notifications. They said, just do it for three days. Just, just try it. You know, you can add them back on, just try it. Mm-hmm. So I did, I turned off all my, my notifications wow. and three days later, I was having a conversation. I was telling another friend how awesome it was. And this was actually when I was in Denver mm. mm-hmm. and they said, oh, you must've seen the social dilemma. And I said, oh, I've you know, heard of it. I haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet. So that conversation sparked me watching the social dilemma. And in that moment, I realized how tech was influencing and and social media particularly is influencing our lives Mm -hmm. in in a way that is not positive Mm -hmm. and and makes us really unhappy Mm -hmm. and then i started to think about how i felt after using technology and after being on social media and i to be honest i never felt good and these notifications that were coming up on my phone nothing was important nothing was you know needed to happen right then. And a lot of them, I, you know, had been apps or, you know, that had been on my phone for a long time and that maybe weren't relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. So that experience of turning off notifications was huge for me because all of a sudden I wasn't changing my phone. I didn't even need to look at my phone because there was nothing, nothing popping up at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and then I, in that same time frame, I also started taking my phone out of my Uh, bedroom. So I didn't have my, I wasn't scrolling on my phone right before bed Mm -hmm. and I wasn't prompted to pick it up in the morning because that's what I was doing. Just like many of us, we pick up our phone and we scroll for 20 plus minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the shift that I started to see was in the morning, I had my thoughts and I wasn't immediately altered at all. I wasn't pulled to a news article or I wasn't pulled to an email I just woke up with my thoughts and I then also started to realize that I had thoughts that evening that maybe I would, you know, kind of come back to in the morning Mm. and I could either, you know, I was progressing in my, my life or my business or whatever I was in my head that those are the things that I was working more deeply on instead of being distracted Mm. by technology and notifications and, and other businesses or other people's, updates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been incredible. Yeah. That sounds so supportive of what we talked about earlier in terms of like this aspect of entrepreneurship being getting to knowing, getting to know yourself and like the aspect of like the intuitive connection of like, what do I actually want? What do I actually like at her core? What does Allison need out of life? And it's sort of like, wow, yeah, that makes so much sense. I'm not, if I'm not letting other people dictate it via, you know, notifications that I'm getting and all this stuff distracting me, yeah, you know, I imagine it's so much more, you're closer to that intuitive connection with yourself. And it sounds like you've had, you know, progression in thoughts and ideas and all of these things because you're really creating that space. So that's, super powerful. Um, you know, so yeah, with the note or go for it. Yeah. And one other thing, we didn't talk about comparisons much mm-hmm. or just that word comparison, but mm-hmm. especially right with technology is, and I think one of the reasons why we all feel, you know, uh, I don't, can I crappy? Why yeah, we all feel crappy? Fair. It's all good. <laughs> Um, you know, we're um, unhappy when we get off social media is because all of a sudden we're comparing ourselves to everyone else and we have none of that. Right. And so that goes back to all of a sudden we want these external things. We want what we don't have. And we're, we're really pulling ourselves away from our, our own selves. We're that self-connection hmm. where we're focused on something completely different instead of, again, getting back to that really honoring and staying connected and and realizing, acknowledging what other people have mm. and saying, you know, I honor and, and acknowledge that, mm-hmm. but then I'm also coming back to myself. And I think 
you know, that comparison and that influence that we're seeing um, in social media is, is no wonder why, you know, depression and all these things that Social Dilemma talks about um, is so prevalent in our, in our culture right now. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Huh, yeah, the comparison is real. And I, I've found myself thinking more mindfully of what I'm seeing in my feed and like, you know, Ooh, even like curating that and thinking like, okay, if I'm going to get on social media to do, you know, whatever I need to, to engage for my business and all of that, like, I still, I don't want to see, I still want like curated things coming to me. Like, I don't want to see, you know, the, the things that make me feel bad about myself. And so, yeah, trying to curate that a little bit has been powerful for me. Um, and that was an Amy skill, you know, I'm learning of being more intentional about my technology use Yay. and asking like, is this serving me? Um, so, you know, you gave some, but I'd love to know like, what is, you know, maybe a quick action that people listening can take to be more mindful about their tech habits? I'm gonna give you the advice that my friend gave me, mm -hmm. all of y'all. Um, try turning off your no notifications. Mm -hmm. And what I did, I turned them all off and I did that for I, it was probably about a week. Mm -hmm. And then after that week, I then added back my text message notifications mm -hmm. because I was missing communication from friends that I, you know, that fulfilled me and that I really wanted to keep in contact with. That was intentional, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I added back um, tech. And then, then um, I was using Lyft and Uber at the time. So I added those back in too because it was real time you know, communication, mm -hmm. they weren't sending me a bunch of um, mm -hmm. pop-ups throughout the week when I wasn't using that app. So, mm -hmm. um, so first thing, delete all, or turn off all your notifications mm -hmm. and see how that goes for, I, if you can do three days, I would, I would say for a full week and just really reflect and journal. If you journal, mm -hmm. journal how, how that is for you and what's shifting and what's changing and what, when you're not getting these notifications, you're right. That's time away from your mind or what you were thinking about. It's these distractions. So what is happening and really reflect on now what you're able to think about and what's now that you're not distracted, what are you able to accomplish, achieve, and think about? Mm, and then this, the second thing that I would recommend is sleeping without your phone mm -hmm. and try that for three nights, mm -hmm. not a full week, three nights, Mm -hmm. and really reflect journal of how you feel in the morning and mm -hmm. what's shifting for you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people use their phone for their alarm clock, mm -hmm. get an alarm clock. Or if you have like Google Home or some other device that you can set an alarm for, use that. So you don't have your phone physically with mm -hmm. you to prompt you in the morning. Love that advice. There it is, everyone. Those are your challenges. Turn off those notifications. Let us know what I, you think. <laughs> I do a lot of recording on my computer. And so I often have it on do not disturb. And so I, I always, I, I feel so good when I turn it on. I'm like, yes, I am choosing. I just, I don't want any notification. I should just leave it on all the time because I don't want you know, the things popping in and distracting me. So listeners, be sure to let us know, um, you know, try out this challenge. Let us know how it goes for you. Um, you know, what you're noticing in the morning, like Amy said, doing some journaling, really connecting to that. Um, so I think one thing quickly too, I've noticed is that now, like for news, for example, when I want to look at news, that's when I then go in and open the app and look at news. So I'm not necessarily missing anything that I don't want to. I'm just not being bombarded with all the other things I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And now I'm also going in on my own time. So I'm not being pulled away from something I'm working on or a text message that I'm writing to another thing. And so that's been really incredible. So you're yeah. not necessarily losing information. You're just doing it on your own time. Mm. Love that. Take control. Take some of the yes. power back. Yes. Today. Love it so much. You know, on that, I, I personally believe that leadership is sort of like the culmination of, of the things that we do um, and, and what we put into our days. And so in terms of, you know, how you show up for yourself as a leader, in this wild journey of entrepreneurship, what are maybe some of the non-negotiables in your day and why are those so important to you? 
movement movement is such a big one. So uh, in the morning, now that I'm not looking at my phone before I wake up, I have really me time. And then whenever I do want to look at my phone or emails, that's I'm, I'm setting, I, I'm acknowledging that that's what I want to do. And I, mm-hmm. I do it instead of my phone buzzing at me. Mm-hmm. So um, I stretch in the morning, I get, you know, the blood flow in, mm-hmm. I journal and journaling has been so incredible. I used to kind of uh, poo poo it, I guess, or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. n- not think it was as beneficial and impactful as it, as it has been for me. Mm-hmm. So that's been incredible. And then I always try to get some t- form of exercise in, whether it's um, uh, in the evening, whether it's yoga or a long walk or running or taking a hike. Mm-hmm. Um, so movement really is like getting up and away from your computer or even going and walking and meeting someone for lunch. And mm-hmm. it's so easy for us to really just get in the grind and continue to be at our desks mm-hmm. and using technology, especially now during these pandemic times of, you know, really wanting to connect and, and be connected through our devices, but Get, you know, getting away, moving your body around and, and getting a, a perspective shift has been crucial for, for me. Sure. That's so powerful. And I love, I love those as suggestions. Like it, it sounds like, you know, you're, you're taking that time to intentionally connect with yourself and you're, you know, you know, what's important to you. You, I love that. You're like, I'm not using my phone in the morning. So, you know, suddenly there's so much more that you have time for and space for um, yes. that's such a beautiful gift to give yourself to start the day. Just kind of that uninterrupted time to focus on you. Beautiful. And I'm sure that that, you know, just sets you up for the day in such a, a powerful way because, you know, you've taken that time to open your intuition and kind of get into that. So last question I have for you is how can folks stay connected with you? Where can we find you online? Um, and you know, where should people look if they want to uh, connect with you? Love it. Uh, I am on Instagram and part of my uh, social media commitment has really been to minimize the places that I show up online. Mm-hmm. So there's more time for in-person connection and, and just, so I'm, I'm only on Instagram mm-hmm. and that's at attainable underscore AF. Love and it. yes, and I've been doing a motivation or Monday motivation and just one motivation for the week. So check me out on Monday um, where I share some motivation for people to take with them or do or, awesome. um, you know, things to do on, on Monday for, for a better week for all of you. Um, and then my website is attainable-af.com where uh, you can find out more about services and um, just connect with me there as well. Cool. That sounds amazing. Um, yeah, listeners, for sure, go check out what Amy is offering. Um, you know, if you are looking to make some change and kind of want that supportive structure around you, um, definitely plug into what Amy is doing to figure out how to cultivate that happiness within you and, you know, learn to listen to your intuition and create space for that in your life. So um, before we part ways, Amy, do you have any final comments or anything that you want to, um, you know, final words of wisdom to leave folks off with? A happier life is absolutely possible for Mm -hmm. everyone. And Mm -hmm. it's absolutely possible to start doing little things uh, today. So, you know, whether that's connecting with people more, you know, calling a friend or, um, asking someone if they need help or, you know, letting, even letting someone go in front of you in the grocery line, there's all, think about what really fulfills you and, and it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but what are these little shifts that you really enjoy? It may even be a hobby of yours and, and carve out time and just make time to continue doing that. Um, you know, I think work is very fulfilling, but there's so many other things, uh, as well. So just really, get in touch with um, those little things that make you happy and and try to do them multiple times a day if you can. Mm, Love that. Yes. Making those choices to, to find that happiness and following what feels good and all of that. And I love that, you know, you talk about how it's, it's available to you right now. It's attainable. It's there for you. You know, 
Um, I love that. It's not the like, I'll be happy when I deserve it. If like none of that, I love your approach that yes. it is there for you to grab a hold of now. So listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Um, thank you guys. Drop us a comment. Let us know, um, you know, your takeaways from the episode and also be sure to check in and let us know how the not having your phone in your room, turning off notifications. Um, let us know how those changes are for you. Hopefully. We want to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> we want to know. Know. let us know. I want to. I want to hear how powerful they are. I know. I'm going to definitely turn them off. I. I have some on my phone that I feel. I can feel them pulling me and distracting me, and so it's time to go Allison do it yeah time to you know <laughs> engage with them on my own terms um so thank you everyone for tuning in please remember to like and subscribe whether you are uh joining us on youtube or via the podcast and we will catch you next week thanks so much Allison mm -hmm.